Hey good everyone, Skarvig here with another update to Atlas. Uh, and it is a monster of a patch. There is a lot of stuff to delve through here, so I'm hoping to actually push through and just, I guess, talk about a little bit about each part point. Because there's a lot of room to cover, and I don't want this video to take up an hour. Um, I'll skip the introductory step and just go straight into the first part, which is... There was going to be a patch today, but the patch didn't happen. Uh, if you're watching this, the patch may have already happened. But what they've done is they've opened up the player test server for people to go and have a look at. So if you basically go into your Steam, click on the properties of Atlas, uh, you go to the betas tab, put in the password that they've actually put here, uh, Edward Teach Blackbeard, make sure you capitalize it correctly, and then you can select the test 2021-recruit-testers realm, and that will allow you to get into the player test realm. Now, when you're actually in the game, you have to make sure that you actually select the only server that's available in there. Don't try and reconnect to an existing one or try a single player. It's only going to be, I think it's Polly's Cracker. And you can go in and you can actually have a look at all of this before it goes live. And in my experience, if you're on the player test realm and the live patch is the same as the player test realm patch, when you go back to live, once they've deployed it, you shouldn't have to download anything. It should just swap over nice and neat. Uh, anyway, that's what we have. Uh, no wipe yet, obviously, because we're still testing there. They're a little bit not sure whether uh, the build would be good enough. And so they've at least let us play with it, play with it but uh, no wipe and no new live build, which will be coming soon, hopefully. Okay, first up in the release notes themselves are the platform saddles. So the new saddles are for the elephant, the crab, and the grand torture guard. Uh, the creatures will move 20% slower. Uh, NPCs may be moved onto the platform and they can man weapons. And so you'll be able to use things like cannons, large cannons, catapults, puckles, ammo containers, and wooden chairs can be placed on the platforms. Up to eight structures may be placed on the platform and there's a resource cost for each. And we'll basically just show a little image of each of the saddles and what they look like, although you may have already seen my previous video where we sort of broke down a little bit of the what was coming up. And that actually had the images of these guys actually moving, which was actually pretty cool. Uh, the platform saddle for the crab is pretty much the same. They mentioned here the slight difference in that harpoons may be launched from the balusters. And 12 structures can be placed on the crab platform. With the Grand Torchiga, we have similar sort of thing. So we've got cannons, large cannons, torpedo launchers. So obviously because when they actually showed this one, it was actually swimming through the water which was actually an interesting one to see. Um, why the crab can't actually have torpedo launches, don't know, but slight differences. I'm sure they'll tweak this over time. This is just the initial way, and I'll have to see how these are actually used in the long run as well. Uh, but 12 structures can be placed on the Grand Torchiga as well. I guess I'll talk a little bit more about my thoughts on the platform saddles when we get up to something a little bit further down in the patch notes, which is the Puckle Tower. Um, but we'll just continue on for the moment. We're looking at the new tames. So they've managed to get the croc as a tame using prime shark meat as its favorite food, and it's a bowler tame on the taming tier three. The yeti, which favorite food is ice, it's a bowler tame. And then the yeti powers the ground dealing a low amount of damage and applying a chill debuff. Ooh, sounds pretty cool. Uh, no saddle required for either at this point in time. Uh, the spider is now a possible tame. Favorite food being insect meat. I don't think I've actually seen insect meat. I if it's a, it is a new meat. There you go. Uh, and it's a web shooter uh, will produce silk if fed its favorite food. Well, that's pretty cool. So if you want to be able to use silk, tame yourself a bunch of spiders and then go and get yourself some insect meat. Uh, prime shark meat is something coming from a shark corpse. I imagine you just harvest it like you would normally with a pick and you've got a higher chance of getting prime meat. And then we have insect meat, which is coming from ants, bees, and scorpions. And then you cook it, obviously. Yeah. Creating the, cooking the meat creates cooked animal meat. Oh. So the insect meat doesn't have a cooked form. It just goes straight to animal meat. That is an interesting thing. I was not expecting that. Uh, next up on the thing is actually that puckle tower. Now this thing looks crazy. And my understanding is that it is not as crazy as what you actually would think. All right, so it looks like it's got a dozen, of course, I think I've already got about two dozen images of puckles on the tower. And basically it becomes a, uh, 
a fortification that you can use as a defensive structure. And I, I really like the idea of this, although they kind of already had it with the manned buckles. In this case, it's just not manned, you just have it, right? Um, deals 400 damage per shot, and it requires the fuel of coal or oil to function. Um, and my understanding of this is it only, it, it's not going to behave as if it has, you know, 36 or 48 puckles or whatever the count of the bloody images are on there, right? So you're not going to get that rate of fire. It's going to be something along the lines of it has a rate of fire of two puckles. It just it looks like a porcupine. Um, I'll have to dig up the image that I had. It looked like basically a, a, a hedgehog on an ice cream cone. And it was kind of a funny image that I managed to pull up before. Anyway, that's the puckle tower. And the way that I actually thought of this was going to be interesting is with these puckle towers, you're putting that inside your claim areas, like your lawless claims, for example, to defend yourself. And if it's far enough inside the claim area that it's outside cannon range and it's actually forcing people to actually move into your area, you know, how are people going to be able to take down the puckle towers? But then they've introduced the saddle platforms and so you end up having these mobile siege bases that can then roll into those areas where these puckle towers are. And those mobile siege weaponry are what's probably going to be used to take these things down. And so you, you left the question, how are you going to defend yourself? Well, you know, the same siege platforms that people are using to come in and take your stuff, you're going to be able to use them for defense as well. So I still don't know how this is going to play out. I can just imagine that it um, makes me want to actually play on the PvP servers because I want to be able to get some footage of a grand battle with siege weaponry and siege creatures, you know, big bases full of these puckle towers. But um, I know there's a lot of people out there that are basically going to say the same thing that's always been said over the last few patches. You know, if we're promoting battle on the sea, there's a lot of land battle stuff here. Um, I'm sure that there'll be more to do with the, the sea base stuff coming in. It's just it seems that the current focus is around this stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I'm hopeful and I want to see more. And I think this stuff will be fun. But yeah, I also want to see more stuff for the sea as well. Um, but there is some stuff further down which might be uh, of more interest to people who are interested in boats, but not necessarily boat combat. Next up is a new container, the munitions storage. Learning it from the ammunition storage skill from the auxiliary tree and moving ammunition out of this storage must be done manually. Uh, the weight of the munition is reduced by 88%. It will obviously hold all of the different types in there, including some other things like zipline anchors uh, as well, from the looks of that, um, with a nice uh, reasonable crafting cost. So, Moving ammunition out of the storage must be done manually. So does that mean that this is just purely for storing ammunition so that you get a weight reduction of 88% but you won't actually be using these with your cannons for example. So you still need to use your ammo box to feed your cannons but you could carry all your extra firepower in a munitions box and reduce its weight by 88%. At least that's how the way that I read that. <coughs> so quite useful because I mean carrying around spare ammo and you, you need it especially after a big battle and you need to restock your ammo crate um, it can it's certainly a thing that I've run into you know, fighting ships of the damned uh, flying straight into the next one the large stone foundation um, I have actually seen this it was huge you know it's a four meter wide three meter tall uh, so we're talking this is one of the things that they've built to try and reduce the the number of um, building pieces required so the idea is that if you need to build you know, four meters wide, it might be five by five, um, but you think about that, right? So if you, five by five, you need to put down 25 foundations. And so if you want that same area, you could choose to use a large foundation instead for basically a similar cost. You then have a single piece instead of 25 pieces. And then from a loading perspective, that's a lot less that the server has to load whenever you bring it into render range. Next up, which was a huge part of this patch, and it's like one of the tiniest lines in here, uh, the trade winds. Uh, predictable routes throughout the map where you get a boost to your traveling speed. Uh, you'll be able to, so whatever, you get an alert via the HUD when you actually have the trade wind effect. Uh, the wind boost will be constant and predictable along the trade wind path. And an overlay of the trade wind location can be seen on the map when you zoom out. So you'll be able to see where the winds are actually going. Uh, but that's all they've really given you. So it's really up to people to jump in there, get on a boat and actually have some fun 
flying around the map and see how fast it really is. Uh, the new modular rail system. So the first of the modular ship customizations is going to allow us to swap railing modules on the ramming galley and the majestic kraken because they're the only two modular ships we currently have. Uh, there's quite a lot of modular pieces from the looks of this that we're actually going to be able to get a hold of. Um, you place a railing module will consume points from the ship's module point total pool. So the module point pooling system is also in play here. Uh, so for the ramming galley you get 43 points and for the magic kraken, majestic kraken you get 40 points and the different types of modules I won't run through very much about these it'll be up to people to basically determine what they want to do here we'll just mention what they are. Uh, we have a regular ship railing for Kraken, uh, we have a ship cannon railing, we have a large cannon railing, a ballista railing, catapult railing, a cargo rack, diving platform and a dinghy hangar as far as all of these things go. Costs are pretty cheap, um, things which are cosmetic appear to be a cost of one, so that's your diving platform and, sorry, no, not cosmetic, cosmetic costs nothing, zero cost. The diving platforms, so your utility diving platform and your dinghy cost one, cargo rack cost two, and then your combat orientated one cost three. And there's a slight differentiation by the looks of it between a regular one and a Kraken one. Uh, note, currently, Kraken railing modules are only compatible with the Majestic Kraken. The standard railings are only compatible with the ramming. Hopefully that will change in the future where you get to customize which are, what, the look and feel of whatever ship you want. Even if it looks stupid, I'm looking forward to, it's like it says, currently too. So it's obviously something that will come up. Okay, some changes to the armor docks. Uh, fully constructed docks will no longer be found in drops. So I'm guessing you'll only find a blueprint for different quality docks. Uh, you can't put armor docks near sea forts, obviously because they're contested uh, little places. They obviously don't want you to have docks just hanging around there. Makes sense. Uh, the gold cost scales properly with the blueprint quality and ships anchored outside the docks are no longer protected. Uh, ships may now need to be anchored closer to the center of the armored dock to receive protection. Uh, okay, so they're possibly having to tweak some more things there to make that one work. Uh, yeah, I guess it is what it is. So next up we have some changes to trade. Uh, the warehouse have their placement restriction radius reduced by a third. So obviously you can build outside of the warehouse range more easily. Uh, the markets and the warehouses are now limited to one per company per island rather than just one per person per island, I assume, with the previous one. Uh, I don't mind that change. Um, it reduces the amount of space that people need or are required to take up. I shouldn't say need, because people will always want to take up more space if they can. Uh, the maximum seafort tax has reduced from 50 to 40. The shipment cooldown has been doubled, so you can launch trade ships less frequently. Uh, the trade shipments weight has doubled, so they can carry twice as much. So less ships out there, but they're carrying more stuff. You can kind of see the trade off there. Uh, the value per grid reduced by 20%. The net reduction on trade gold generation based on the changes is about 60%. Because yes, as the ships went around, they were generating gold. So obviously there's too much gold that they were seeing happening there, and they tried to reduce it a little bit. Okay, the lawless claim system. The claim towers viewed through the spyglass are only visible within 100 meters. I've seen a picture of that where it was just tower upon tower within the, the spyglass image, making it kind of hard to work out anything with the spyglass. So I like that. Uh, the Pathfinder claims on map, I should have reworded that a bit differently, but um, when you actually look at the mini map or the main map, you'll only see the claims within 200 meters which is nice because otherwise you're just going to be able to know exactly where someone's living and go and get revenge if you need to. You actually have to go and search for them. Uh, your company's claim towers and other grids can be seen on the map. So your own ones can actually be seen however you like. So some bug fixes as well to go with that. Uh, server reboots won't cause parts of ships to be claimed. Uh, ships may no longer be claimed by land claim towers. We need to do that with the, uh, the water claim towers that go within the land claim towers. Uh, weapons on cargo saddles can no longer be claimed. <laughs> Some good stuff there. Uh, buoys can no longer be claimed. Claim towers may no longer be placed on shipyards. I'd have heard that you could even get claim towers on ships, uh, which might be an interesting one. Uh, fix some instances of ships exploding on release from a shipyard. 
Now, I've had that before, but it was because it hit the ground below the shipyard. And it was too shallow for my shipyard, so there must have been some other bug. Uh, resolved an issue where the remaining island points get out of sync between servers. And lastly, NPCs on the armored dock can no longer contest island claims. Ah, interesting one that one. I remember reading about that. And yeah, you basically lock a NPC inside your armored dock, and that caused the claim to be contested, and you wouldn't be allowed to um, make progress on the claim. So yeah, crazy. All right, another one which people may or may not have been looking forward to. I certainly was. It is the new map layout. And so, the island positions have been moved to account for the trade winds. Uh, harvesting resources have had a massive overhaul, and a little bit I've done on the PTR that they already published. Um, you, the resources do look quite different. Um, and I imagine there's going to be quite a lot of bugs around resources, so if you find a resource that isn't giving what it's saying that it's going to give, and a bunch of these other things, make sure you report it, because they're going to need to know to do some tweaks. But most of the resources will have a common set of resources things like straw and resin and things like that and you know when I was actually hitting trees I was getting resin and when I was hitting palm trees I was getting coconuts and things like that where um, some of the items that you get now are just you get a few extras which are uh, useful resources on top of the standard wood and stone and thatch and all that kind of stuff um, the Freeport Islands no longer provide metal at all it's an interesting change because it does force you really to get off the island you can't progress by making tools and things like that you can basically just go and get your wood and your thatch and fibre and stuff to go and buy yourself a boat or build yourself a boat and get off and away you go. Um, so grid specific settings are being redistributed and so if, yeah I'll have to pull up an image of the map if I can find one. The free ports are all in the south. There are lawless areas that surround the free ports that give common resources. The golden age and the kraken have been moved a couple of grids north of where they were before in the middle. And then the claim islands only exist around the edges of the map. So all the claim islands are around the outside. And then the lawless area claim ones are everything else. And so there's actually a couple of different types of things going on in there. And I didn't even realize it at the time. So you end up having your free ports. You have your claimable land. You have your lawless claimable land. And you also still have lawless land. So if you're in lawless, people can't plonk down lawless claim towers. It's just not possible. So you, you actually have to be in one of those areas, which is a lawless area claim area, to be able to put down a lawless claim tower. So it's going to be interesting to see how the dynamic of people spread out to those various different areas and how that will actually help with your solo or small company people. Will they go off to that lawless area where they can't have people taking their claims? Um, in, you know, and who will actually bother to go out to the lawless claim area where it's possible that you know someone will take out your lawless claim tower and then they've basically got all your stuff or is it going to be that you know if you haven't managed to populate all those other areas which are desirable all that's left is your lawless area claim areas or is that meant to be your short term you know i need to just land here for a short period of time as a staging area before i move on somewhere else uh, i'm not sure how people are going to use those various different areas it's going to be interesting to see uh, weather conditions and the ships of the damned have been made more harsh in the north fair enough so it's easy down the bottom harder up north uh, i seem to recall something about that uh, server grid editor the data driven tools and for adding resource templates have been applied to the islands uh, have been added to the server grid editor so unofficial servers can basically go nuts with all of these new changes that are actually in there all right, patch kits. The repair bonus skill from the construction of Mercantile Tree now applies to patch kit healing, and the repair fiend ability now applies to patch kit healing. Now ships. The Ramming Galley and the Majestic Kraken can now be painted. Nice. Uh, removing the blue tint from the Majestic Kraken is to support Pathfinder painting. In case the Majestic Kraken is not blue upon spawning in now, maybe? I'll have to actually pull one in and have a look at it. Uh, ships now take less damage from land sources. Oh. So if you've got a land based cannon or something along those lines firing onto the ship, is that what they mean? I assume that's what they mean. As opposed to a ship accidentally running ashore. Uh, a new war drum 
song is available, which is hold ye, hold fast ye dogs. Uh, decreased damage from land sources further. Hmm, there you go. Well, that's going to make it interesting for um, doing a landfall. Basically, if you've got a fleet of ships, which have got your siege weaponry, that you need to get onto land so that you can start raiding. Uh, you can use the war drum to basically provide uh, a damage reduction to your vessels of further 30%. And so, yeah, you can just obviously barge your way in, taking less damage, and then get your troops onto the ground and do what you need to do. And a quick last bug fix there. Puckles may no longer be placed on ships. An interesting change. Puckles not allowed, but everything else is. And um, I wonder if that's to uh, promote um, combat from ship to ship so that the puckle can't just automatically take things down. Uh, it didn't say manned puckle there, it just says puckle. So, not sure about that one, maybe someone could actually uh, let me know what that one's actually about. Tames and creatures, sea tames will follow a ship if they are following one of the pathfinders on the ship. They're good. Uh, and seagulls can now equip hats. Um, probably that first one's quite nice. It means if you've got a dolphin, or you've got bothered to take the time to get seahorses and dolphins, you can have them all following you and then you move to another grid and they'll come with you. Well, it doesn't specifically say that, but uh, the fact that they're following means that they might. I'll have to test that one and actually see whether it works. The fact that they follow is really nice nonetheless, because you can actually go to the area where they're at, tame one, and actually have you follow you on your ship back to your base. Alright, treasure maps. Treasure maps spawn may no longer be blocked with structures. Oh, oh really? That is interesting. I'm going to have to go and try that out. Uh, fix some occurrences of blank treasure maps in single player. Yeah, okay, fair enough. That's very nice, but that first one's actually an interesting one because I know people have been real dicks about that sort of stuff and people will block off things so that other people can't get to it just to grief them. Um, and that's not even PvP related, that can be PvE related, just blocking these things to be annoying. Um, I'm going to jump in and I'm going to see if I can place a structure on or around a treasure map. Okay, on to the last bit. Miscellaneous. Blackjacks can be crafted at the smithy and because of, it was a special request, apparently beans now give a small amount of vitamin B when eaten and recipes in later patches will be coming to incorporate those changes. So maybe that's not in and it's coming up or I don't really know. Maybe they're just saying that that's what they're going to do or it already does. See, um, the wording's a bit odd there. Uh, wall hooks, canvases, preserving bags, and mortar and pestles can now be placed on wooden tables. Oh, hell yeah. I like that. Instead of having to bloody pop the mortar and pestle down the floor, you build a table which becomes your workbench and you can chuck a few things on there. You could even have it so a couple of preserving bags on the floor, walk down a table, and then have a couple more mortar and pestles on top. Um, or preserving bags on top, doesn't really matter. Uh, there are possible issues there in placing objects on top of one another. Mm. Bug fixes. Uh, resolved an issue where the bed couldn't be placed in PvE Lawless servers if a non-allied pathfinder was nearby. Mm. Okay, that's an interesting bug. Uh, stats are visible on place structures and weapons. Resolved issues where some variables in the game but any couldn't be modified in private servers. Uh, beds now be placed on lawless PvE servers when non-ally part oh, that's a is that a repetition of the previous one? Beds now may now be placed on lawless PvE servers. Resolved an issue where beds couldn't be placed on PvE lawless servers. It's the same thing repeated twice. Alright. Uh, quality farmhouses no longer lose stats after restarting in single player. Oh. I didn't even know that was a thing, but alright. There you go. Uh, certain blueprints had an incorrect crafting account. Uh, fixed some instances of unintended ladder interactions. Uh, then there is now a max building height, and this affects claims, beds, or weapon structures. Fair enough. I can imagine that having a height limit is a probably a thing. I wonder actually, they didn't specify there what the height limit is. Maybe they should have done that. Um, geodes can be gathered once again, yes, when I was on the PTR today, uh, I was gathering geodes and getting a few things like crystals and salt and things like that. Uh, geodes can stack it from 5 to 25. Oh, increase from 5 to 25, fair enough. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it doesn't need to be so small with a 5. 
Uh, removed manned puckles. The other manned structures remain. They removed the manned puckles? When I was on the PTR, it was still an available item in the skill tree. Maybe I just wasn't able to build it and I hadn't been able to see that. Makes it interesting. I mean, having manned puckles becomes irrelevant when you actually have a puckle tower, which is powered by coal. So I don't really see the point in a manned puckle. Um, and then, yeah, ships now pause for a limited amount of time when transitioning between servers, allowing occupants to load in. And yes, I've seen some interesting stuff there where you're loading between maps and uh, stuff just gets lost. So it makes sense for them to put a little bit of a something like that in there. Uh, and then, final note, the obligatory, it is early access. Things are changing. And boy, this bloody patch. Holy moly, it's going to be I'm very reluctant to try and unpack too much from the patch and give too much of my thoughts because with so much changing, um, we've got new map, we've got new creatures with um, new claims, new ships, new towers, new everything, right? So there's a huge amount of stuff in here and how it's all going to affect things. You might as well just throw it all out of the water because we're going to see quite a lot of uh, adjustment as people work this stuff out and work out what's good and what's bad and uh, what's buggy, really. Um, I'm looking forward to jumping in and having it go. Just got to wait now. Uh, as of recording this, the wipe has not happened, so I haven't actually jumped in on the live servers to start my next go. Right, hopefully you've enjoyed listening in on the patch notes. Make sure that if you do find bugs out there, you go and report them on the Discord or let me know down in the comments. I'm happy to report them for you. And uh, yes, if you're interested, come and join me in my Discord and chat things all Ark, Atlas, Valheim, and any other game for that matter that you might be interested in. Alright, thanks for listening in and catch you on the next one.